One of the highlights of my 28 seasons as a Dodger announcer was my association with Don Drysdale. Don had broadcast 17 years in the major leagues for four different teams before he came back to the Dodgers. In fact, the Dodgers were the only organization he ever played for. And what a career he had. Drysdale won 209 games, 25 in one season, 23 in another. He picked up one Cy Young Award. He also turned in six consecutive complete game shutouts, which is still the mark in baseball. He was on three world championship teams in Los Angeles, 59, 63, 65. Nine-time All-Star. And as a hitter, he wasn't bad. Drysdale hit a total of 29 home runs for the Dodgers, seven in one season, which is still tying the National League modern era record. Drysdale was inducted into baseball's Hall of Fame in 1984. Drysdale finally came back to the Dodgers in time for the 1988 season. It was to be a special year for the Dodgers. And Don and I were together to start the season in Vero Beach, Florida, calling exhibition baseball. The first day, we were in the booth minutes before the first broadcast. And Don turned to me and said, you know, every place I've been in announcing Major League Baseball, I've had a guy alongside me that I wanted to chat with. Do you mind if you're the next? I said, no, I'm used to that. Seven years of doing NFL football for NBC, 15 years of doing basketball, college basketball for the Pac-10 and for UNLV, one of those a championship year. So, yeah, I enjoy that because I think the analyst, if you want to call it that, adds something to the play-by-play man's broadcast. So we got started. Top of the first inning, first game of the year, Drysdale's debut as a Dodger announcer. And sure enough, early on in that half inning, Don turned to me and made some comment and asked me for my opinion about it. We got through the first half inning and the phone rang in the booth. It was the boss. He told Don, Dodger baseball announcers are one voice at a time. No more two voices. So much for that experiment by Drysdale. But the season moved along. The Dodgers were not supposed to have a great team. They fooled everybody. They won the National League West. Some people said they would finish fourth. They then shocked the New York Mets in the National League Championship Series. It was a stunner because the Mets had beaten the Dodgers 10 of 11 games during the regular season. So the Dodgers went into the World Series against another heavy favorite, the Oakland A's. That World Series was to start at Dodger Stadium. In game one, the A's took a 4-3 to three lead to the bottom of the ninth inning, and Dennis Eckersley was on the mound. He got two men out. The Dodgers put a man on base, and Kirk Gibson stepped up and hit a dramatic game-winning home run. Ben Scully was on the NBC television network at that time, and he called the home run of Gibson. He said, you know, in the year that has been so improbable, the impossible has happened. And on CBS radio, Jack Buck exclaimed, I don't believe what I just saw. Don Drysdale was behind the microphone on the Dodger radio network. Two balls and two strikes with two outs. We're in the bottom of the ninth inning, and the A's lead by a score of four to three. The tying run, standing at first base in Mike Davis. Kurt Gibson hitting for Pena. Eckersley sets, there goes Davis, a pitch is way outside, and no throw. So the Dodgers put the tying run in scoring position, and now Eckersley wants to talk to Hassey. Hassey saying something to the home plate umpire Doug Harvey. Hassey saying Gibson, I think, interfered, and Doug Harvey said no, he did not interfere, and now Eckersley and Hassey want to have a chat. So that doesn't take long. Davis standing in second. A full count to Gibson. Three balls and two strikes and the crowd on their feet. And Gibson
Jackson calls time and backs out. So the battle of minds starts to work a little bit. Gibson a deep side, re-gripping the bat. Shoulders just shrug. Now goes to the top of the helmet as he always does. Steps in with that left foot. Eckersley working out of the stretch. Here's the 3-2 pitch and a drive into right field. Way back! He's far! He's far! The next night in game two, Oral Hershiser dominated. For one thing, as a batter, he collected three base hits, and in doing so, he became the first pitcher to have three hits in a World Series game in 64 years. Hershiser allowed only three hits that night, all singles by Dave Parker, and he was working on a shutout with two outs in the ninth inning. Here was Don's call. Both feet on the rubber. Rocks into motion. Here's the one-two pitch. Curve ball struck him out. The ball game is over. The Dodgers defeat the A's by a score of six to nothing. The A's won game three, two to one, on a ninth inning home run by Mark McGuire in Oakland. But the Dodgers came right back to win four to three in game four, and they were one victory away from a world title. Hershiser went to the mound in game five for the Dodgers, and he was sharp as ever. During the ball game, he allowed just four hits. He struck out nine A's, and he was at five to two, moving to the bottom of the ninth inning. Hershiser got two men out, and Tony Phillips was the last obstacle before the Dodgers could win another championship. Dempsey wigwags the sign out. Hershiser winds and a 3 2 pistol. Out. It's over. The Dodgers are the world champion. You know, the Dodgers were the only team in Major League Baseball to win two World Series in the 1980s 1981, 1988. All right, let's flash ahead over four years, to 1993. People have said to me, what was the saddest moment in your broadcast career? It was July the 2nd, 1993. The Dodgers had just opened a series in Montreal. They played game one. Before game two, we all boarded the chartered bus that takes the team, the, uh, the players, the coaches who want to go early, and uh, the broadcasters. So Vin and I got on the bus. And Don did not show up, which was a shock. He always was there for the 5 o'clock bus. But we thought, you know, maybe he's meeting friends for an early dinner. Maybe he's already out at Olympic Stadium just waiting for us. Well, when we got there, no Don. I did the radio pregame show to get ready, and the time went by. We came within an hour of game time. Still, no Don. Finally, with about 40 minutes to go before the game, the Dodger traveling secretary called the Montreal Hotel and said, will you check on Mr. Drysdale's room? They went up, found the door dead bolted, had to tear it down, and when they did, sadly, they found Don. The call came back to us in the stadium. We were told, 
and we're only 15 minutes away from game time, we were told you can't report anything yet because they've not been able to find Annie, Don's wife. She'd gone to the beach with the family for a birthday gathering. So we went into the broadcast, then on television, me on radio at the start, and for seven innings, not a word was said. Finally, in the eighth inning, we got a report that Peter O'Malley had given the word to Annie Drysdale, and at that time, Scully made the horrendous announcement of Don's passing. Each other a long time, and I've had to make a lot of announcements, some more painful than others, but never have I ever had to been asked to make an announcement that hurts me as much as this one. And I say it to you as best as I can with a broken heart. Don Drysdale, who had a history of heart trouble, you may remember a couple of years ago he had angioplasty, and he was found dead in his hotel room, obviously a victim of a heart attack, and had passed away during his sleep. He was not on the team bus today, but we thought perhaps he had taken a cab. We tried to reach him at the hotel, there was no answer, and a little while ago we found out what had happened. And to Annie and Donnie and Darren and Drew and all the Drysdale family, our prayers for strength and our tears as well. Hard to believe that it's now been 30 years since Don Drysdale passed away. He was a great man to work with, a great friend, and a terrific father and husband. We all still miss him.